blog wilsonhomestead.com and today we are doing our completed farmhouse tour. We have been remodeling this farmhouse for about three years now and I've shown you kind of bits and pieces on the YouTube channel and on my Instagram as we we're going along but we, I've never showed it completed anywhere all at once. So this is what you've all been waiting for. I've had so many requests to see the completed house tour now that it's done. This farmhouse is over 100 years old and we have been not just remodeling it, but also trying to restore it to some of what it would have been back in the day. I really love farmhousey, vintage, antique looks. So I've just kind of pulled a lot of a lot of the decor items from thrift stores. All the work that has been done in this house has been done pretty much solely by my husband. He is very handy. But there is pretty much not a spot in this house that we have not renovated. There is Yes, I think every wall, every ceiling, every floor, we have either pulled it back to its original hardwood floor and refinished it, we've pulled back to the original shiplap and restored those, or in the areas that we have been able to restore, we've patched it. So I am so excited about how it looks, and right now our house is listed for sale, so it's completely clean, which doesn't always happen, and I am filming this now while it's all completely clean and showing ready because that ain't gonna happen again. <laughs> so I hope you guys just really enjoy this completed house tour. I know I'm so stoked to show you all, and let's get right into this. So this here is the living room. This is our front door right here. You come in, our beautiful mustard yellow door, which felt a little bold to be doing a mustard yellow door but I love how it looks with the blue house and the white trim. It all just really ties in together and it feels very charming and unique to me. So you come in the pretty mustard door and here's our living room. We have a big piano here. All of this shiplap on the walls that you see is actually plywood. And you really can't even tell the difference. Plywood is a great way to go. You come around this side of the room, we have all brand new blinds from blinds.com. Actually, it was one of the last things we bought for this house was blinds. I'm like, now that we have them on, I'm like, man, it is so nice to have privacy. Especially these two big windows in our living room are right on the street and it feels a little bit like a fishbowl without the blinds and now that we have blinds I'm like oh my gosh we have like privacy we don't have to like leave the lights off when it's dark outside so it is really nice to have blinds and these blinds from blinds.com are just seem very high quality I love how the brown blinds look with the white shiplap and then our ceiling up here is also brown it's nice raw wood up there so it just ties in with the blinds and then contrasts with all the very white walls. So I love how that turned out. We have our couch over here and the matching chair over here, which they both feel very farmhousey to me and I, and they're also very kid proof. You can wipe them off so easily. And then further around this side of the room, you can see we have a swamp cooler up here. We have a natural gas fireplace over here in the corner, which is really nice. It's really affordable to have natural gas heating. So that's just been really nice in the winter. And then also I love that the top of it doesn't get too hot to put things on. So you can see I store all of our kids books and our Bibles and everything on there. And that's just a really convenient little storage area. And then we also have my old rocking chair with a pretty throw blanket and a throw pillow. So now you can kind of see our ceiling. I absolutely love the ceiling. It's so interesting to look at. It has quite a bit of raw edges on the wood and it's just got so much texture and different colors and it's very, very cool. I love how the ceiling turned out. And you can also see above me are these two pendant lights. They're a farmhouse hanging pendant lights and we got those off of Amazon. Most of the stuff that I can remember if we've bought it online or I can at all link it somehow, I will link that in the description box below because I love these kind of lights. They are absolutely gorgeous. So now we have reached the entryway into the kitchen. So I'm gonna take you guys into our big, beautiful kitchen, which I feel like really is one of the main features in this house is the kitchen is massive and beautiful and it has so much countertop space and I'm gonna be really sad to leave this big of a kitchen. So here is the whole kitchen. 
you can see we've got refrigerator back there, we've got a whole bunch of countertop space, dishwasher, sink over there. This kitchen's layout has changed quite a bit since we originally bought it. This wall over here, which I will show you guys later, didn't have anything. It was just empty. We've added a whole, um, all the open shelves and the cabinets and countertops. And then the dishwasher was way over there in the corner and there was just a little section of countertop space and cabinets. So we have expanded the countertop space so much. This kitchen has so much functional space, it's crazy. Me cooking three meals from scratch and I do so much canning, I can probably like 500 jars of food a year. This kitchen is so perfect for everything I need to do with it that I literally am set to leave. I wish I could take this kitchen and put it in whatever house we move into because this really is my favorite room of the house. So you come over here where I talked about all the open shelving and then it has this whole bank of drawers and countertops. This, the, all these countertops my husband made from scratch. He built all, actually he built all the cabinets and all the countertops and then they're sealed so they're waterproof so that the wood won't get damaged if like you leave a puddle of something on the countertops. So these countertops have been so nice and they're so beautiful. I absolutely love butcher block countertops, which they're not butcher block because you can't cut on them because of the waterproof material, but they look like butcher block, which is fabulous. All these open shelves are so nice to store some of my canned goods for the year because I don't know about you, but I think canned goods are absolutely beautiful just as decorations even. So I store a lot of my herbs and all the grains that we use and beans and cookbooks, but just a lot of canned goods. So those shelves are super functional. I find that I love to store things on those that just look beautiful to me. So anything else that maybe isn't as beautiful, I store inside the cabinet so you can't see it. But it's just so fun to have a set of open shelves in your kitchen to like do something fun with and put some decorations on or something. So over here in this corner is the entrance to the stairway, which I will take you guys up there later. My kids are actually sleeping right now, so I'm trying to manage to do the downstairs house tour while they're sleeping, and then when they're awake, I'll do the upstairs tour. And then you come further this way, and we have these beautiful French doors that open up onto our porch area, which the porch area is such a cool area of this house because it's so secluded from, because our house is in town, so it's lovely to have a really private area. The porch is surrounded by these really tall stained wood fences that are absolutely beautiful. The top of the porch is just gorgeous wood beams, so it's awesome to have the kitchen just totally open to the porch. It feels like it just flows in there, especially since the kitchen floor color and the porch floor color is the same color, so it just flows out there. It feels just like one big area, so adding those French doors in was such a good idea, and I've loved how it turned out. And the outside of those French doors is also mustard yellow, which I'm obsessed with. You can see that we have the same pendant hanging lights in the kitchen. We have these as lighting pretty much in the whole downstairs. You can see there's one above the sink as well. There's some different lights upstairs just because it's a little bit shorter, but I'm a little bit obsessed with the pendant lights if you can't tell. So, and then I have my aprons hanging there. We have a refrigerator over here, and the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the oven, the microwave are all a matching set that we bought from Home Depot not too long ago. We have our Berkey water filter, which we're obsessed with. Being on city water, it is really nice to have a Berkey water filter or some really high quality water fil filtration system. And then now you come over to the sink area and I am a little bit obsessed with this awesome cast iron farmhouse sink. I'm gonna be sad to leave the sink because we lived with a stainless steel, just kind of a crappy, really small sink for a long time. And we only have recently put this sink in and ever since we put it in, I'm like, oh my gosh, washing dishes is like so much funner when you have a beautiful sink to wash them in. We also have this faucet that pulls out and it has the soap dispenser there. So having a really big double sink like this is a must have in a farmhouse kitchen. We also have a really big, beautiful window here. We have the most beautiful views out this window of the Rocky Mountains. And even though it's in town, you can still see the mountains so well above the houses and it's a really beautiful sight to see as you're washing dishes. And then you can see our whole garden out here and, all, and the chickens behind the garden. And so it's really, there's so much fun things to look at as you're washing dishes. And then you can see we have our dishwasher here. So there actually used to be a bank of upper drawers where the refrigerator is now. And I don't think, I think there was some here. We opted to not have them over there, but we have them here and then over here where the refrigerator used to be. So we've kind of rearranged quite a few things, but here 
are some upper cabinets with a lot of mason jars and our bowls and plates and such and then all the lower cabinets and these all these cabinets are absolutely fabulous my husband as i said handmade all the cabinets from scratch so they're just even more special to me knowing that my husband made them and they also just feel really fancy and they're all the soft closing ones so you can like slam the cabinets and it doesn't make any noise so whenever i go to other people's houses and they don't have that feature i'm always like slamming cabinets and then it like scares me because i'm not used to it and then coming further over this direction this is such a fun little area i have a little wall here with my cast iron pans and some plates and my pretty enamel work colander. I love how this kind of breaks up all the whiteness of the cabinets and gives it something interesting kind of in the middle of a big bank of cabinets to look at. We were originally going to do more open shelving in this area because we didn't want to do cabinets here because our tankless hot water heater, heater is in this area right here and so you kind of have to have access to it. So we were just going to do a couple shelves but then I put all those pans up there and I was like hey that's actually pretty cute we should just leave it like that. So. This is the perfect area to hang all my cast iron pans, which I use all the time. Microwave is not even on because we don't really even use it except for vitamin storage and then also heating up flax bags in the winter. We have a nice gas oven, which I love. And then we have our last little section of top and bottom cabinets and a nice little section of countertop space over here. And then that kind of leads us into the bathroom. So this is the opening to the bathroom. The living room is this way. Here's the big entryway. It leads into the kitchen and then the bathroom is right here. So you start coming in the bathroom and we have right away our coat closet that wasn't here before. This area was actually really weird when we moved in. So this wall is parallel with the living room walls. There, it's a big square now. But when we moved in, there was a parallel wall about this big and then this wall went sideways, like diagonal. And the door was diagonal and the washer and dryer had to be over here because the wall was diagonal and weird. So we changed that around because that was just a little odd and it just makes it feel more like it should be. It just was a little awkward how it was before and it, now the washer and dryer fit in this bathroom quite a bit better and we were able to have a really big cabinet in here and countertop and sink. So that was really nice to change but the all that to say, there was not a coat closet in here before. And there's not really a great coat closet anywhere near any doors. So we figured the bathroom is a perfectly fine place for a coat closet. So I sewed this curtain for it. And then there's this little area for coats on this cute little birch branch that my husband got from his parents' house. And so we're using it as a coat rag, which I think is adorable. And then up here, there's a little area for storage. I just have a burlap tote up there for storing some of my fabric and patterns and yarn. Oh, I am getting out of breath because I am 20 weeks pregnant now and I don't normally talk this much at once. And then here's our washer and dryer right here and we have all these amazing open shelves in here as well for all of my laundry room storage, which I think are so cute. <laughs> I love open shelves and having a bunch of shelves above the washer and dryer is so functional as well as cute. And then on this side you can see that there's a shower here. This shower curtain is actually pretty new. I ended up getting it from Target because if you guys didn't know, Amazon does not have good shower curtains. It's like you find something random here and there that Amazon doesn't have anything good of. I will link where I got it below because it does really match this room. It looks really nice and farmhousey but simple. So I like that one. It's hard to film in such a, a little bathroom area with a tripod. So this is the shower. You can see it's got nice marbly tile on it. My husband did all the tile on this shower, which was kind of a nerve-wracking project because he had never done tile before. Our first tile project ever on our own shower, but it turned out amazing. I love how this tile looks. It's very minimal, but it makes a, makes this farmhouse bathroom look a little bit more fancy. And then down here you can see we have the actual bathtub, shower head, all the normal bathtub and shower things. So it's a bathtub and shower combo since this is the only bathroom in the house. And then we've made it to the other end of this bathroom. So the bathroom is kind of long and narrow so it was kind of an uh, interesting thing to figure out where exactly to put different things to fully maximize the space and not make it feel too crowded because this little tiny room being the bathroom and the laundry room it could really easily feel like way too crowded but I feel like it's okay I feel like it's not too crowded so over here in this little cubby area is the toilet and then we have an open shelf here where we store our toilet paper and things. Over here is a shelving unit my husband built in. So it's got all these shelves here 
And this is what we use as our linen closet, which is so handy. I was storing all of our linens and towels and everything under the sink here. So having an actual linen closet is so, so nice. Over here is where I store my vacuum and mop. We also have these towel hooks here and here and here. They're kind of like cool, like cast iron towel hooks that really match this room. We also have one over here for a hand towel rack. And then we come to this gorgeous dark countertop that my husband also built. He built this and then stained it a really dark color so it looks like walnut. It's absolutely gorgeous. This was the first countertop he built. He built this before the kitchen ones and it turned out so well that I'm like, I need wood countertops in the kitchen as well as the bathroom. I just need them in the whole house. They're, they're amazing. We have this really cool like bowl bathroom sink, which looks really cool. I hadn't actually ever seen one in like someone else's house ever. It is a little harder to keep clean than I expected, but it is really, really cool. And then a tall faucet. And we have this mirror here that is stained the same color wood as the countertops. So they kind of tie in together and look really cool. You can see we have on either side of this mirror, two windows. When we moved in, one was bigger, I can't remember which one, but one was bigger and lower. And then one was smaller and higher. They were like, they did not match. It was not at all <laughs> looking good. So we kind of centered them to where the cabinets and sink and mirror would be. So they're, they're an equal distance from the mirror. So now it looks like how it's supposed to look. And then we have these little pendant lights that they attach to the wall instead of the ceiling, but they kind of look similar to the pendant lights we have in the other areas of the house. And that's all for the bathroom. So we're gonna head back into the living room where our master bedroom attaches to the living room. So now we're back over here in the living room, pretty much right exactly where we started the video. And this door behind me is the entrance to our master bedroom. So again, a lot of shiplap, white shiplap walls. So here we have our bed, it's just plain. I would like it if we could actually find a bed frame. I would love to find one of those like kind of black metal farmhouse frames but I haven't been successful at finding one so far. Someday I will find one. So over there, we have a nightstand. It used to be an end table for the living room, but we moved it in here and it's working really nice as a nightstand. It looks really cute. We have one single hanging pendant light in here because we don't need it as bright as the living room. That picture that's hanging above our bed is big enough that it, also, it almost makes it feel like a headboard since we are missing a headboard. So that looks really pretty above there. And that's actually a painting that my husband's uncle painted for us as a wedding gift, which is really cool and it is absolutely beautiful. And then over on this side of the bed, I have, instead of a nightstand on my side of the bed, it's just a dresser, which I can reach on top of the dresser. So I use it as a nightstand, so it's all fine. And then right here, I have my rack with my baby carriers. I seriously had to downsize my baby carriers for showing because there are literally like 30 of them at this point. It is ridiculous. I will link my baby wearing playlist if you're interested in seeing how to use some of those, but I paired it down to two, my two favorite ones. And then over here we have another window with new blinds. We got all the blinds in the house to match. They're the same color, so I really like that. There's the door going out, so I'm gonna show you guys around. We can see this side of the wall. So here we are on the other side of the bedroom. I just have some hanging pictures and a nice mirror for getting dressed. Nice to have in here. And then we have these closet doors. So when I moved in, the closet was only one door wide, and then over here were a bank of drawers that were built into the wall, and it looked really weird. So we took out that weird bank of drawers, built it in with shiplap, and then we did a double wide closet. So my husband actually built these doors. They're really cute. They look like old barn doors, and then you open it up, and there is a ton of closet space in here. There's this weird little corner thing because the stairway is going up right here, so you can't really cut that off because that's like the stairs right there. But all the floors in this bedroom, this bedroom is the only room left with the original hardwood floor, so we were able to actually restore it, loose sanded it down, and then put a finish on it, and it is gorgeous. The colors in this floor are absolutely to die for. Like, I wish this was in the whole house. But the floors in all the other rooms are actually also plywood. So we just did um, big boards on the floor. The floor in the living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom all match. They all flow together and they're all plywood. And we did a olive green color, so they're really pretty. But this room is just a little extra special to me because it does have the last of the original hardwood floors. So actually my husband is home now. He's helping me with the kids so I can film the upstairs tour of you guys. So we're here in our kitchen right now. I showed you earlier that this is the entrance to our upstairs. And this stairway is 
kind of short. Luke had to modify a few places so I didn't hit my head on it every time I went up and down the stairs. But I think the stairs are actually just really cute and quaint and they make the upstairs feel a little bit more like a loft. I feel like as a kid, I would have loved to have these bedrooms. They are just such fun kid bedrooms. So let's head up the stairs. The top of the treads are painted the same olive green color as the floor and most of the rest of the house. And then the front of the step is painted white. So I just really love the contrast between the olive green and the white. And the walls are white, just like most of the rest of the house as well. At the top of the stairs here, I have my canning shelf. I have most of my canned goods either on the open shelves in the kitchen or on this canning shelf at the top of the stairs. So we're up here at the top of the stairs now. There's the canning shelf right here. You come up the stairs and then it kind of turns to the right here. And this is the top of the landing. There are shelves right here in front of you as you're coming up. And then off to the right is Dimmy's bedroom and off to the left is Sophia's bedroom. So these weren't here when we moved in. Luke added all these open shelves which I think they're really cool and cute and they help so much with storage up here since it is a pretty small upstairs. So we keep a lot of their bedding and extra board games and then down on the bottom shelves, I, I do have some more jars of food that I canned. So let's head off this direction into my daughter Sophia's room. So this is what you see right when you're coming in the door. There's a window behind me that we installed. It's a brand new window like most of the windows in the house are. There's some really cute artwork on either side of the window, a little gallery wall. And then her bed is over here in this far corner. She has a little toy chest on, at the foot of her bed. There's a rug in front of her bed. And then also Luke built these two doors that are on each of these bedrooms upstairs. These are the only handmade doors in the house and I love them so much that I wish we had done them in the rest of the house because they are absolutely awesome and they look so cool. So he built the entire door, he put mineral oil on it so it's it looks like it's finished and then it's got some cool like kind of cast iron looking handles. Behind the door over here is where her little dresser is. So actually all of the walls in this in these two bedrooms all of the shiplap was already here. It was just covered up with some weird like paneling. So we tore down the paneling. There was quite a few spots in, in these walls that needed to be patched. But actually most of this wood is the original wood that was up here probably when the house was built, which is super cool. The floors were wood when we moved in, but they were really old. The flooring here is very not level. There was big holes in between the boards and the floor. So we actually just laid new flooring over it so it still looks like it should, it's still wood. It's just going the other direction to make it more sturdy and then it doesn't have holes in it, which is important. So over here behind me on this side of the room, Luke actually installed all these storage shelves. So since this wall is so short anyway, there's not really much you could put over here, like a headboard won't even fit down there. You could put set, like a really short dresser or nightstand or something. But we figured since that area is kind of odd, just with how short the ceiling is, that would be kind of nice to just have some in, some built-in storage shelves. So it really maximizes the storage in here and they look cute. And then it makes it a little less weird that the ceiling's like this. So over on this side of the room is the little closet. And now this room actually didn't have a closet when we moved in. The other bedroom has a closet in this same spot. It was just all the way over, so the wall was right here, flush with this wall. So we decided, since the other bedroom didn't need that big of a closet, and if we added a closet in this room, the house could be considered a three-bedroom house, which would really increase the value. So Luke actually knocked out this wall right here, and he just moved it back to the middle, so it's in between the two rooms, so the, the closets are equal size on each side of this wall. There's a little coat rod here for all of her dresses and a little shelf up here for any blankets or toys. So even though these rooms are really small, there is a lot of storage in here. Like you can see these shelves are very empty. We don't even need all this storage up here. So it's been very nice. Luke also installed a couple little electric heaters that are just installed in, into the wall so that since we only have the one natural gas fireplace downstairs, in case these rooms get colder in the winter, there's like separate heating for up here if need be. We actually haven't even had to use it yet, but you know, if you wanted to like keep these doors closed, it, it would get colder up here. So now we're gonna move back this way into Dimmy's room. You can see it's just a straight shot into Dimmy's little nursery. So let's head over there. Now here is Dimmy's little bedroom. And I gotta say, 
their two little rooms are absolutely adorable. I'm actually a little bit jealous of their rooms and you can kind of see how as a kid you would probably have loved having kind of rooms like this that they feel like a loft a little bit. They're very cute and charming and Dimmy's room actually has a little like cubby hideout spot that would have made the perfect fort as a kid. So there is a new window installed in here as well as, as well as new blinds and then the trim around both of the windows in his bedroom and Sophia's bedroom match the doors and the door trim so it kind of all ties in and looks cool. We have his crib here underneath the window and then on this side of his crib we have a little accordion rack that I like to hang some of his shirts on. I have his dresser over here. It's a little bit different than Sophia's but they're painted the same color so that it kind of matches between the rooms. And then we have some little artwork here. It's a very barnyard themed artwork right here which is I think perfect for a little boy's room. And then you can see over here is this little cubby that I was talking about. It's a great little storage space, which we, we don't even have anything in there right now, so it's not like totally necessary, but that would make such a cool fort when, if we were here when the kids were a little older. Now, Demi's room is a little bit smaller than Sophia's room because the stairway is right here. So this wall comes in a couple few feet further than the wall in Sophia's room. So you can see that the ceiling actually is way higher right here than it would be in her room. So there's another handmade door in here, which is super cool. And then you come this way, and we have a guitar hung right there. And a really cool old chair that I found at a thrift store that we don't really need another chair around our table, but it was so cool that I really couldn't resist. And it was only $10. So that went in here, it goes really well in his room. We also have all this open shelving in Dimmy's room. So it's the same as in Sophia's room, it's on the same wall, and since the ceiling is just as low in his room as her room. These open shelves are really nice storage. And then here's his closet. It's the, basically the exact same as her closet. I really like this very open closet because I mean, I think little kids clothes are really cute anyway. And there's a shelf up here for, again, blankets or toy storage. He also has a rug on the floor here that is blue and kind of matches some of the decor in his room. We found light fixtures at Home Depot, I'm pretty sure is where we found these ones, but they're very flat to the ceiling since these rooms are pretty short. We didn't want any like pendant lights that hang down, even though I love the pendant lights. We found very, just very thin short lights that weren't going to like make the room feel any shorter than they already were. So now let's go outside and see the porch area and then also our yard. So we're back in the kitchen, back at these amazing French doors. So you open it up, it's white on this side, but then it's mustard yellowed on this side to match our front door, which is super cute. So let's come out here. Here we are in our porch. You can see these beam beams above me are just super beautiful. They look really rustic and like big, like high quality beams like this porch was probably so expensive it was one of the main features in this house that was like really high quality when we first moved in we didn't have to change this area at all the beams above me so that was the like only area in the house that was like good when we moved in everything else had to be changed so you can see my yellow door is behind me and then the house is the blue and the, with the white trim over this way here is the gate that's leading out to our backyard but all this whole area is fenced, so I can let Sophia play out here on the porch by herself without worrying about her getting away. Because this fence this is really tall and really secure and really high quality, and I also just really love how it looks. So then you come further this way, and the fence carries all the way along until there's that. That is a little gate right there. It's just a little, like, kind of half gate. And then we have our big blue shed that matches the house. So this shed is super nice for Luke to store all of his tools in. They used to be like all over this porch for while we were remodeling the house. This porch was the wood shop, but now it's actually a porch again. So all the tools are consolidated in the shed, which is really nice. And then over here is this cute little wood stove. Can you picture sort of lawn chairs around this wood stove in a circle and this porch is such a big area for like entertaining guests or just sitting out on the porch like on a nice summer day. We even love to sit out here in the winter and have a fire in that thing. And then this whole area is protected from snow and everything. And then the, all these fences also protect you from wind. So this is like such an amazing place to hang out. And then you come further around this way and we have our big freezer. And it's just right outside the back door, right next to the kitchen. So I could really easily just come out here and grab some meat for dinner. Let's go out this back gate and go see the yard and the chickens and the garden. I had a little helper wake up from his nap, so 
will hopefully be able to finish this with just one helper. So this is coming straight out of that gate I, got, I showed you guys. This is also the view I have for my kitchen window. I'm sorry, my neighbor is mowing his lawn right now. So excuse, we'll just have to get through it how it is. So right here is the gate to our garden area. The whole garden and chicken yard is fenced with T-posts and wire fencing. It's just really nice to have that fence keeps it safe from dogs digging in the garden and everything and also it's a nice area for the kids to go play out in where I don't have to worry about them getting out. So here is the one side of the yard. This is just the lawn area. This is a really great place for the kids to just play and it's also where we keep our rabbit tractor for when the rabbits are old enough to go out on grass we like to let them get as much grass in their diet as possible so you can see our rabbit tractor over in the corner. And then here behind me we have our garden area which is such a beautiful area. My husband did so much work on it last summer, spring and summer. When we first moved in, this big garden plot you can see right here is the one I first dug in. And then this last year my husband got into gardening and he put in all the raised beds and filled it in with wood chips and really made it pretty because I am not that skilled. So this garden right here is in the ground so it's not a raised bed like the other ones but it's got a rock border which I think is really beautiful. I love rock border stuff. And then it has stepping stones in between the paths so that the ground doesn't get as compacted. But in the back there you can see we have a bunch of little like two by two planters and those are for when we do winter squash. And then over there we have our two big raised beds which is where we grow like the bulk of our produce for the year because those raised beds are workhorses, I tell you what. But all the paths in between, all the garden beds and everything, they have plastic underneath so that it's a weed barrier and they have wood chips on top. So they're really beautiful and the weeds don't grow through them, which is really nice. And then you keep coming further this way and you can see behind me is our chicken coop. So this gate right here leads to our chicken yard. And so I think about half the yard is the garden and the rabbit area and then half is the chicken yard with the chicken coop and shed. So behind me we have our chicken coop. It's a nice big shed. Half of it is storage. We've used the other half for a chicken coop area and also where our rabbit hutches go. So I'll take you there in a minute. We've actually moved the chickens out to our new Chickshaw chicken tractor. I will link the plans down below. So here we are in the actual chicken coop. So on that side of the chicken coop on the front is the whole yard area and that's where their new chicken tractor is. On the side of the chicken coop is the compost bins, compost area and everything. On the back of the chicken coop is a really nice covered storage area for like a lawnmower and all sorts of stuff. So this whole area back here is so functional. For being in the city, having two city lots is so nice. There's so much we can still do on our little homestead, even being in the city. So that is all for this completed farmhouse tour. I am so excited that you guys finally got to see what our little farmhouse looks like because we've been working so hard on this for the last three years. And I'm just crazy excited that it's to this point. It's so fun to be living in it like this. After going from what it was when we first moved in to this, it just feels very fancy and very cute. And I'm just loving having like cute spaces to decorate. And this style, this old style, is just something I'm really passionate about. So I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already and head over to my blog and subscribe to my email list. But thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.